On the 16th day of October, Halloween gave to me 16 Vincent's cracking, 15 Lee's counting, 14 Brides abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 Fathers stripping, 11 Au Pairs drowning, 10 Children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 Snowy mazes, 7 Bacons digging, 6 Doorways bending, 5 Children yowling, 4 Zombie Bulls, 3 Haunted Mirrors, 2 Monster Houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to uh, the 16th day of the 31 days of Halloween. This is uh, Friday, October 16th. First of all, happy Friday. Glad you made it through the week. Second of all, uh, thanks for listening to another entry into uh, this series all about the 31 movies that I am watching. Uh, and and in some ways I'm recommending to you, but in other ways, uh, it is both a celebration of stuff I enjoy and uh, stuff I haven't seen yet. You know, a good excuse to watch a couple of new movies. Might have a couple of new ones uh, coming up. Even though we've done uh, Bly Manor and uh, The Cleansing Hour, uh, we're both kind of first-time watches for this. But, hey, uh, it all worked out. So, uh, this, uh, we we just got over, uh, <laughs> well, it makes it sound like it was a virus, The Cult of Dracula. Um, we, we just finished up a little run of vampire movies. We're going to end those here. Uh, this is, uh, of course, The Pit and the Pendulum, the Roger Corman uh, film uh, starring Vincent Price and a bunch of other people that you've never heard of. Um, so this was uh, really just an excuse to dip back into the well of great Roger Corman movies. Uh, I will go ahead and spoil my list and say that we're not doing a run of them or anything. Um, it was just fun to talk about, you know, the pit and the pendulum, uh, which is one of my favorites of the Corman, uh, Poe adaptations. And of course, all these, uh, Edgar Allan Poe adaptations are incredibly loose adaptations. It's really just using the title and eh, kind of the story, uh, you know, for example, in the pit and the pendulum, it's. I mean, a pretty straightforward affair between an interrogator and uh, and a dude. What is being interrogated uh, with a giant swinging uh, axe on a pendulum and, you know, a, a, a pit with no uh, definable end to it that he is trapped around and potentially uh, will, will fall into. Um, none of that, really. Eh, don't worry about it. Instead, <laughs> the, the pit and the pendulum is uh, the... Um, a, a word that I am happy to say we can use appropriately a couple of times so far uh, this Halloween. Uh, it is a gothic story in which uh, a young man comes to a castle to talk to uh, the Don and Doña Medina, uh, a brother and sister who live in a, a big castle. And his sister had been married to Don Medina. And... Uh, died under mysterious circumstances. So he has come to this castle to figure out what in the fuck is actually up. And it turns out that Vincent Price is the child of uh, a torturer. And so is kind of a nutcase. Uh, he's, his sister described him, describes him as a kind and gentle man. And it seems like that is in direct response to who his father was. And so, throughout the movie, uh, Vincent Price is this very kind of nebbishy uh, character who is trying to mourn his wife appropriately and try to satisfy, you know, his his ostensibly his brother-in-law's uh, curiosity. But inevitably, because this is a Roger Corman horror movie, this is going to dip into the macabre. Um, and so... Uh, he, he was married, the sister was Barbara Steele of, uh, uh, Black Sunday fame at all, you know, I mean, Barbara Steele is a legend, if you don't know who Barbara Steele is, when I mention that name, uh, just Google her and start watching some of those movies and you'll understand why everyone knows who Barbara Steele is. Um, <laughs> but she played the, uh, the wife, uh, who has mysteriously died and there are all these little touches that are very Poe-esque in, uh, in the sense that, like, 
you know, uh, Price believes that uh, the house is haunted by uh, his his now dead wife. Um, and when they go to, in, you know, disinter the body uh, to satisfy his curiosity that like, oh, you know, oh, she's sucking the castle. I think I can't really do a Vincent Price. That's as close as that's more of a Bob Dylan, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, as he is like starting to lose his nut a little bit over seeing his wife and hearing his wife around the castle and stuff. And they disinter this body, and it looks as though the corpse inside has been struggling to get out. That, in fact, she was buried prematurely. You know, spoilers, I guess, for a movie that's 60-ish years old. But, um, I mean, the the idea is that she, uh, the wife is, in fact, alive. And she is uh, in cahoots with the doctor who was attending her. Uh, so that they could uh, basically drive Vincent Price crazy and, you know, get his estate and shit like that. Well, you know, the problem with driving Vincent Price crazy is when he goes crazy enough, he goes daddy and becomes the torturer uh, that his uh, his father was, believes his uh, his wife and, and betraying friend, the doctor, to be... Uh, previous victims of his father and anyway yeah just goes nuts and and it's a you know a tour de force performance uh from vincent price obviously who is having a blast in this movie he gets to play everything from this like timid meek bunny rabbit of a dude to a guy who you know enjoys his torture let's uh let's just call it for what it is he likes torturing he enjoys a lot um he finds pleasure in it so yeah and that's kind of the pit in the pendulum. Um, why should you watch this? Like I said, it is it is a Vincent Price tour de force. And if you like Vincent Price like I do, then he's fantastic in it. He's he, one of those actors that, like, strangely, uh, no matter how old these movies are, if Vincent Price is in a movie, I can kind of hang my hat on that. Like, he's going to be doing something interesting in the performance that no matter how you know, theatrical and stagey the other performances are around him, uh, he always kind of holds it down. And he does that in, in spades in uh, in The Pit and the Pendulum. Um, the other acting is, eh, you know, Barbara Steele is fun because Barbara Steele is fun. But Vincent Price is really the guy that's like, he's the professional actor uh, of the bunch. That said, I, I love Vincent Price. Uh, like I said, you know, mentioned Barbara Steele. She's incredible in it um, because it is the Roger Corman era of uh, like Vincent Price at Grell and Poe movies. There is uh, a gorgeousness, a richness to the color palette. I mean, it is like the sets aren't always expensive. Uh, in fact, I would argue that they are the other kind of set. But uh, it is just a... The castle is just this beautifully realized world. And even though it occasionally looks cheap, it's something that I don't mind living in. There is an atmosphere to this movie. Also, let me say this in, in this movie's, uh, not even defense, in uh, in its offense of why you should watch this. Another thing, this movie's like an hour 20, if that. Um, real quick watch. And in addition to being a super quick watch... Uh, you know, it is also kind of jarring at the end. There's a nice little stinger on the movie. Like, once again, I've seen this movie a number of times. And I was like, wait a second. What about Barbara Steele again? What happens to her? Oh, fuck. Right. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a nice moment where you get a little surprise there. You know, for all of those reasons and more, you, you should watch this. Like, from the tie-dyed visuals of, of the opening sequence... Uh, to the very last shot, there's kind of always something going on in this movie. And the fact that you can never quite trust Vincent Price or his motivations is really interesting. Even though, as a character, like, watching it again, like, you know the journey of this dude. But knowing that, you you kind of see uh, in his performance where he, he sort of makes it clear that his his sanity is already starting to fracture some. Um, he's, he's terrific. And... Like I said, I wanted kind of a representative of that era of film um, on the list, not just, you know, the Hammer stuff, which is great. 
in a weird way, uh, the Corman stuff is the early Corman stuff in particular, uh, when he was doing the, uh, Poe adaptations, those movies are real movies. They're not like, you know, Hey, here's a little shop of horrors and we're going to do this in a day and a half. Like those are the movies where, uh, uh the Poe movies are the ones where Roger Corman kind of gave a shit and was trying to make real movies. And it turns out he's a good filmmaker. You know, he he had a great business model, yes, but he was also a good filmmaker in his own right. And so it's nice to kind of live in this space a little bit. There, There's something a little um, innocent about this era of horror in that it's never going to be too horrible, even when it's a little nasty. And this movie's got some teeth, uh, especially for the time. I'm sure it was quite shocking. It, it's not a big downer. It feels like a good story. And... You know, sometimes when I'm watching a horror movie, that's what I want. Like, I want a, I want a nice little uh, tale well told. And that's sort of what the pen, uh, the Pit and the Pendulum is to me. Um, it is a like reading a, a short story on a summer day or something where uh, you just have this kind of brief relationship with, with these characters in the story and, then, and leave it. And, you know, like the Pit and the Pendulum is not a movie I carry around with me. All the time, uh, scratch my noodle about all its uh, inner workings, but uh, it, it's a movie I enjoy going back to. That's for sure, and I, I enjoyed watching it this time. Like I said, if you haven't seen it, um, I, I highly recommend it. It's just a beautiful film, and uh, and a great representation of those kind of Poe movies. Um, you can kind of argue, perhaps, that like Fall of the House of Usher or Mask of the Red Death is a, a better realized version of a Poe story. But for me, watching uh, watching Vincent Price go crazy, I I will trade that any old day of the week for uh, for any of your grander uh, films. Um, so that is uh, your Friday movie. You have been given your assignment. Um, look, first of all, thanks for listening to all this nonsense. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm having a great time going through these movies and, and talking about them with you. Um, so if you would like to drop me a line, you can do so, uh, by going to one of these posts over on legionpodcast.com and clicking on the email there, uh, or you can email me directly at bo, B-O at legionpodcasts.com and, uh, and you can, uh, let me know what you're watching, what your own traditions are, what your, uh, movies are that you like to watch, uh, or, or maybe movies that you avoid. Hell, I'm, I'll open the floor to it. I'll allow it. In the, in the horror court of Bo, I will allow it. Um, but that's enough out of me. Look, uh, you got plenty of Friday ahead of you. Uh, go enjoy it. If you get an opportunity, check out Pit and the Pendulum. And, uh, and I hope you'll come back tomorrow on Saturday for a brand new entry into our 31 Days of Halloween. And uh, I think it's about to get interesting. Uh, not that this isn't, but more interesting. You know what I mean? Any more interesting, we might have to start putting a warning on these things. Uh, you know, like, hey, don't operate heavy machinery or be pregnant and listen to these shows at the same time. Um, look, that's enough. Everybody, go have a spooky Friday. And uh, I'll see you back here on Saturday for another entry into the Legion Podcast 31 Days of Halloween. Talk to you later, everybody. 